Resourceful Designer, episode 293. Think like a design client. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now your host, who gets really nervous before presenting on stage, but loves it anyway. Mark Dickout. Yep, I do. But someone once told me that it's the times you don't feel nervous before presenting that are the times you need to worry about. So, so far, so good. Now, in this week's episode, I want to flip things around a little bit, and I'd like you to consider how clients, those you work with, think about what you do. But before I get to that, just a quick note about the Resourceful Designer community. You know, we would really love for you to be a part of it. Think of us as your accountability group for growth. Everybody in the community has a mindset that they want to grow their business. And in order to do that, they need to learn from other designers. And the best way to do that is by sharing everybody's knowledge. It's like a collective pool of design business growth knowledge, where everybody is helping each other out with the same goal in mind. We want to grow our design business. We want to become better at what we do. And there is constant interaction People sharing ideas, asking for advice, discussing situations with clients, and so forth. And everybody who's a part of the community says that it really benefits them. And we would love for you to be part of the community as well. So if you're looking for a group of peers, of like-minded designers, people that can help you get to that next level, why don't you consider joining the community today? Visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community and join. And now, think like a design client. It's so easy to get caught up in what it is we do, be that logo design, vehicle wraps, websites, trade show booths, you name it. It's so easy that we forget that our clients don't live in the same world as we do. Meaning, our clients don't see the world through a designer's eye. When they look at a billboard, they see the message displayed. But when a designer looks at a billboard, not only do we see the content and the message, but we also take in the layout, the hierarchy, the use of negative space, the color palette. We take note of what fonts were used and what imagery was chosen to relay the message. When we spot something out there that isn't kerned correctly, we feel a need to point it out to others. We feel an obligation to mention every stock image that we recognize out there in the wild. Hey, there, look. See that photo of that happy family in that car insurance ad? I saw that exact photo on Shutterstock. And we stop to admire displays posters, cards, everything out there. Anything that we think was well-designed, we stop and we look at it. After all, when you see something that you think is well-designed, don't you kind of secretly start cataloging away pieces of it in your mind so that you can quote-unquote borrow the idea for maybe your next project? Hmm... I love the way the designer did that one part. How can I incorporate that on the project I'm working on now? Come on, I know you do that as well. You see, as designers, our brains are, well, they're just wired that way. We see the world through a designer's eye. But sometimes we forget that non-designers, they don't see the world the same way we do. My wife has perfected the eye roll that she uses any time I start talking design about something. Sometimes she'll play along and feign some sort of interest, but I know that she doesn't really care that the line spacing on the restaurant's menu is too tight. She just wants to order her food. She just doesn't get it. And that's because she's not a designer. But neither are our clients. 
And that's why they hire us for their projects. And sometimes it's easy to forget that they don't have the same knowledge as us, nor the same interests, that they view the world through a different set of lenses than we do. And that's why it's a good idea that before you say or present anything to a client, you try to consider it from their point of view. Case in point, just today, a designer shared a PDF in a group that I belong to. This is not the resourceful designer community. I belong to several design groups. And she shared a PDF. It's kind of a, let's call it an intro packet that she made to give to prospective website clients. And it explains what a CMS is, a content management system for those of you that may not know. Now, she went into great detail, outlining everything there is to know about CMSs. And as a designer, especially a web designer, I loved it. However, I and several others in the group pointed out that this wasn't a good document to give to clients. You see, she went into such detail. She explained how databases work with columns and rows and each entry having its unique ID and how you can use tools such as PHP MyAdmin to edit the database directly. Then she went on to explain how she builds each client's website has a custom portal that allows the client to easily add, delete, and edit the things in the database that show up on the website. And finally, she explained how all the items in the database end up displaying on the page. She even showed examples of the PHP code used to make it happen. Now, there was nothing wrong with any of the information she presented. It was factually correct, except for for the fact that most of it is redundant to clients. A client doesn't need to know how a database works or how the info from the database ends up on the page. All the client needs to know is their website will have a content management system with an easy-to-use interface, allowing them to add, delete, or edit the content on their site. As someone in the group pointed out, someone buys a clock because they want to be able to tell what time it is. They don't need to know how the clock works. And remember, in her case, She was handing this out to prospective clients, meaning they haven't committed to working with her yet. And the last thing you want to do is scare clients away before they've had a chance to hire you. Donald Miller, author of the book Building a Story Brand, which I highly recommend, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash storybrand to learn more about the book. But in his book, he says simply, if you confuse you'll lose. Meaning, if you confuse a potential client, there's a very good chance they will never become an actual client. And that's why you need to consider your marketing message. Let's say you specialize in logo design and you display on your website the three-step process that you use and you're proud of this. You may say something like, step one, I start with a meeting. I have a list of over 50 questions I ask you, covering everything from how your company got started, to your mission, to where you see your future going. This allows me to really get to know you and your business. Step two, I take the answers you gave me and I start the research process. I take a close look at what your immediate competition is doing. I examine your industry as a whole and determine if there are any trends that we may want to or not want to follow. I may conduct focus groups to learn more about what your clients think about you and your business. Then I gather all this information and I begin the concept stage where I brainstorm and develop several different ideas. I then narrow it down to the most promising ones and fine tune them until I'm satisfied. In step three, I present you with the best ideas. And if required, we then enter the revision process where you are allowed three sets of revisions to tweak your logo until you're satisfied. Once done, I'll create a brand guide that outlines the rules for how to use your new logo and supply you with everything you'll need in all the various file formats. Now, this shows a very thorough process. 
And there's nothing wrong with what the designer described. And the designer may think that this is perfect to show the clients why they're worth the price that they're charging. However, it may have an adverse effect from a client's point of view. Wow, 50 questions? Man, I just want a logo for my new business. Why does it have to be so complicated? I don't know. Maybe I should just go find another designer. Now imagine the same client landing on a website and they saw this. Here's my three-step process. Step one, I take the time to get to know you and your business. Step two, this is where the magic happens as I develop the perfect logo for your business. And step three, I present you with the best concepts for you to choose from. But don't worry, you'll be allowed to suggest minor adjustments to tweak the logo until you're 100% satisfied. And that's it. Now this is something a client can understand. All the other information is redundant. Or it's information that can be relayed to the client once they actually become a client, not when they're a potential client. Again, if you confuse, you'll lose. Now, speaking of presentation, if you're not using mock-ups in your presentation, you are doing yourself and your clients a major disservice. I can tell you from experience, the mock-ups make a huge difference in a client's decision-making process. Many clients are not visual thinkers like we are. Their creativity isn't honed like ours to imagine how things will look. A logo presented to them on a white background just doesn't have the same effect as a logo presented in an image of a storefront or on a shirt or a hat or maybe on the side of a vehicle. A trifold brochure shown flat may look good and is easy to proofread, but it doesn't have the same, call it oomph, as a mock-up showing what the brochure looks like when it's partially folded. I've had several clients over the years tell me that they were hesitant about a logo design I presented them until they saw the mock-ups. Once they saw the logo, quote-unquote, in action, they saw its full potential and fell in love with it. And that's because clients often can't picture things on their own. Asking them to imagine what the logo would look like on the side of their delivery van is nowhere near the same as showing them a logo on the side of a delivery van. Even if it's not the same brand or type of van they use, it gives them an idea of the possibilities. Thinking like a client when you prepare your presentation can help you close more deals. Now, just on a side note here, over the last couple of years, I've gotten all my mock-ups on Envato Elements. They have a huge number of them, and I've yet to not be able to find something that I was looking for. Now, if you're not already a member of Envato Elements, you can check them out by visiting resourcefuldesigner.com slash Envato Elements. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is showing confidence. You know how it is, how sometimes you can tell when someone just isn't sure of themselves. It's kind of off-putting. Well, try to think how you come across when dealing with clients. From their point of view, do you show confidence? Think about it. As you're pitching yourself to a potential client, they're looking at you and considering whether or not you're someone they want to work with. And that decision may end up having nothing to do with your actual pitch. It might not have to do with your price or the ideas you present. It may just come off to the presentation itself. From the client's point of view, they want to see and work with someone who shows confidence in themselves and their ability to actually do the work. So think about it before you present anything to a client. How are they going to see you? You want every encounter with a potential client to end up with the prospect thinking, hmm, this is somebody I want to work with. Next, I want to talk about pricing. Once again, thinking from a client's point of view, are your prices too high? Too low? I mean, what's the deal? And are clients willing to invest in you whatever your price? 
Now, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to how you price yourself. What it comes down to is the type of clients you want to work with. Think of it this way. And let me apologize in advance if you're vegan or vegetarian, but I'm going to use this example. Let's say you're in the mood to go out for a steak dinner. If you go out, you could find a restaurant that serves a perfectly good $20 steak. Or you can go somewhere else and you can get a $200 steak. What's the difference? The difference is how much you're willing to spend on a steak. For those people who opt for the $20 steak, those are those type of people who may never consider spending $200 for a similar meal. It's just beyond their comprehension. However, there are other people out there who regularly go out and get $200 steaks, and those people would never consider settling for a $20 cut of meat. That all comes down to lifestyles and mindsets. Now, for all we know, both steaks, the $20 steak and the $200 steak, came from the same cow. But that's not the point. The person who opts to spend $20 on a steak and the person who opts to spend $200 on a steak have two different mindsets. Neither is right, neither is wrong in their decision. It's just the way they are. Well, the same thing applies to design clients. Thinking again from their perspective. Most clients who consider, say, Fiverr as a great place to get design work made would probably never consider paying thousands of dollars somewhere else on a private designer. But there are just as many clients out there who are willing to spend thousands of dollars with you who would never consider ordering anything from a quote-unquote cheap designer. So who are you marketing to? Do you want low-paying clients to say, you're their person? Or do you want high-paying clients to think you're the perfect designer for them? You need to figure that out. And then you need to target yourself and go after that group of clients. I know it sounds difficult, but really it's not. Thinking back to my restaurant scenario, the restaurant that serves $200 steaks only needs to sell one steak to make $200, where the other restaurant needs to sell 10 steaks in order to make the same amount of money. Well, the same works with the design. You can charge one client $1,000 for a logo, or you can charge 10 clients $100 for a logo. Figure out which one is easier to do. And it all comes down to thinking like a client. And in this case, that can actually help you to land the clients that you want to work with. Now, I can go on and on about how thinking like a client can benefit you, but I think you're starting to get the idea. Most clients, the people we work with, are not designers. They don't think like designers, nor do they see the world around us the same way that we do. Don't let that become the gap between you and them. Whether you're writing to them, presenting to them, creating your marketing copy for your website and other uh, advertising, whatever it is, try to imagine how would a client, somebody who doesn't have a design mindset, experience this? Try to think of that in everything you do. And if you manage to succeed at doing this, then there's no reason why your design business shouldn't be successful either. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Just think like a design client. Now, I would love to know what you thought of this episode. Please visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 293 and leave a comment. I love reading them and I don't get very many, so I would appreciate if you did. And once again, as I mentioned at the beginning, the Resourceful Designer community is waiting for you. Let us be your accountability partners, your growth partners, your success partners. You won't regret it. Visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community to join today. So thank you very much for tuning in. I do appreciate you, especially if you're still around at this point. That really means a lot. So thank you very much. I am Mark DeCote. 
wishing you all the best with your design business. And as I do at the end of every episode, I want to remind you to stay creative. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.